Hi everyone, welcome to Professor Long's Lectures in Anatomy and Physiology. I'm Professor Bob Long. You're either watching these videos because you're enrolled in my class at Del Mar College or you stumble across them on YouTube. Please know that these videos are intended for the students in my classes for the way that I want them to learn the material. If you're in anyone else's class, you have to learn it the way that they want you to learn it. I do things a little differently, especially in the beginning. I like to set a more simple foundation and then we can add details later on. Some people go straight to all the details and it becomes, it can become overwhelming. Anyway, this video is going to be a continuation of our histology labs for our first lab test. This lab is going to cover what we call the supportive connective tissues. So if you've watched the previous videos, we've gone over epithelial tissues. We've gone over support of connective tissues in general. And there was three types, connective tissue proper, fluid connective tissue and supportive connective tissue. We did the three types of connective tissue proper, areolar, adipose, and dense connective tissues. Now we're gonna to move to the supportive connective tissues. There are two subtypes of supportive connective tissue. There's cartilage and bone. So if we were gonna do an outline, and you should do this, you should practice this, especially for lecture, but also for lab. When it comes to the tissues, you need to know that there are four major types. Epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle, and neural. And quite honestly, right now, we're not paying a whole lot of attention to muscle and neural, especially in lab. We have an entire lab test dedicated to muscle tissue, so we'll cover that when we do that. We have an entire lab test dedicated to neural tissue, so I'm not gonna look at them right now. I save them for later, because after all, we have to go through levels of organization, regional terminology, all the body regions, directional terminology, body cavities and membranes and all the organs, the serous membranes, the parts of the microscope, the nine abdominal pelvic regions. You have a lot of different stuff, the planes and sections. You're learning a lot of different information and it can be overwhelming, especially if you have not kept up. You need to be doing a little bit of AMP every single day and reviewing. So now, <clears throat> this is one of the last videos that we're gonna do for the laboratory. So now, We've gone over epithelial tissues, and for lab, we said there was three type, three types. There was, um, no, there was four types that we covered in lab. We covered um, simple squamous, and you should be able to draw a picture of what that looks like. We covered simple cuboidal, you should draw that. We covered simple columnar epithelial tissue, and then we did stratified squamous. So you should be able to write out an outline and draw a picture of each one of them and what you should be seeing. Then for connective tissues, we did three subtypes. We did connective tissue proper. We did fluid connective tissues, which we're not really looking at. And now we're gonna do supportive connective tissue. For a connective tissue proper, there were three that we looked at. We looked at areolar, we looked at adipose, and we looked at dense connective tissue. And you should be able to draw those slides and label them or pull the slides up online and be able to identify all the stuff we've talked about. Now we're gonna do supportive connective tissues. There's two types of supportive connective tissue. There's cartilage and there's bone. Cartilage is a very sort of a foamy or gel-like matrix and almost like the soles of a running shoe, very gel-like, and bone is very hard. For cartilage, there's gonna be three subtypes that we look at. We're gonna look at a stuff called hyaline cartilage. I'm gonna abbreviate cartilage. We're gonna look at elastic cartilage, and we're gonna look at fibrocartilage. Oops, I didn't write that very well. Okay. So this is what we're gonna focus on right now. We're gonna do bone later on some instructors are doing it on this lab test i am not we're going to do bones when we do bone slides when we do the bone tissue so this is everything you need to know for the tissue part of our lab test we're going to go into a lot more stuff for lecture test two but for lab test one where we've done these connect uh, the epithelial slides those four we've done the connective tissue proper slides now we're going to do the three cartilage slides and just like before, I'm going to draw them out for you so that you see what you're supposed to see. And then I'll show you what the slides look like. It'll just take a few minutes. Okay? 
And then we are all, no, there's one more slide that we have to go over for our lab test, which is the skin model and the skin slide. And I'll talk about those in another video. Now, when it comes to cartilages, when we look at cartilage tissue, we just learned there are three subtypes. And we'll learn the functions and locations for the lecture test two. We're not doing them for lecture test one, but on our first lab test, you should at least identify the cartilages. Now cartilage tissue usually picks up this purple stain. Both the matrix, the background, and the cells pick up this purple stain. So the first type of tissue we're gonna look at is called hyaline cartilage. Now this is a Mr. Long description, but I tend to call this one the smooth cartilage because when I look at hyaline cartilage, it has a very smooth, glossy appearance to the matrix. Now here's, a, follow along for a second. I, it's real hard to make this nice and smooth and perfect looking because I'm drawing lines with a marker. But when we look at hyaline cartilage, there will be a thick band of this cartilage tissue growing in an area of our body. And within that cartilage tissue, there's gonna be some empty spaces. And it's within these empty spaces that the cells live. The cells that live in here are gonna have a dark purple nucleus usually, and they'll be sitting in these empty spaces. Also, on the outer edge of the tissue, you will usually find some dense connective tissue with all the collagen fibers running this direction. The membrane of dense connective tissue that surrounds the cartilage is called the perichondrium. You need to know that. Peri means around, chondro means cartilage, and eum means membrane. Like the pericardium is the membrane around the heart, the perichondrium is the membrane that surrounds cartilage. And if I look at this background, it usually has a very thick, smooth appearance to it, very smooth and glossy purple. Now the cells that are found in cartilage, if I ask you to ID the cell, the cell is gonna be called a chondrocyte. There are chondroblasts, which are immature cartilage cells, but we're not gonna see them, not for my slides. And if I look inside the cartilage, there's these empty chambers. It's almost as if I had a cement block, but somewhere in the cement was a hole where a bubble formed and something was living in there. That empty three-dimensional bubble or space that surrounds the cell, that space that is around the cell is called a lacuna, which in Latin means little moon. And so it looks like little moons, I guess, in a dark night sky. So when I actually show you a slide of this, you'll see a very smooth purple matrix. You'll see the perichondrium on the outside. You'll see little chondrocytes trapped in these little empty spaces called lacunae. And there are essentially four questions I could ask. ID the tissue, hyaline cartilage. ID the cells, chondrocytes. ID the space surrounding the cells, lacuna. And ID the membrane on the outer edge, perichondrium. Now, when I draw the next cartilage tissue, the next cartilage tissue, I'm gonna to try to draw all of these on one spot. Let me see how wide my angle goes, my, my camera goes here. I think I have enough room. I'm gonna redirect my camera just a little bit and turn it so that I can get a little bit more space. When I look at the second type of cartilage that we're gonna look at, I'm gonna look at a stuff called elastic cartilage. When we look at elastic cartilage, to me, elastic cartilage is the fuzzy cartilage. I call it the fuzzy one. This one has a smooth appearance. Elastic cartilage has a fuzzy appearance to it. And what that means is within the matrix, there's a bunch of elastic fibers that are all crisscrossed. And so if I were to try to draw that for you, it would start to look like this. I would see this very fibrous, messy area that still has some empty spaces in it. And there's lots of little fibers going every different direction in here like this. And let me tell you, my classmates wondered how I made an A on my histology tests. And the reason I was able to make an A is because I learned how to draw the tissues as if I could only teach it to someone with some markers or pencils and paper, okay? So in between the cells, you see all these fuzzy fibers. 
those are elastic fibers. You will still see a membrane surrounding the tissue that is still the same perichondrium. And for some reason, and I know why, but I'm not going to talk about it, when they stain this tissue, the cells end up looking like, usually like little purple rings in these empty spaces. Sometimes they look like a solid nucleus, or they look like little empty rings. And essentially, I can ask you the exact same four questions on both of these slides. Identify the membrane, perichondrium. Identify the tissue, hyaline cartilage, elastic cartilage. That's a lot of elastic fibers crisscrossing, so it's flexible. <coughs> Excuse me. If I ask you to ID the space surrounding the cells, it's still called a lacuna. And if I ask you to ID the cell, the cells inside that lacuna are each called a chondrocyte. So I have the exact same questions. It's just the appearance of the matrix. One is more squishy and found in places where we want cushioning. The other one's more elastic and flexible. So we call this hyaline cartilage and elastic cartilage, okay? Now, the last type of cartilage tissue that we can look at, let me make sure I have enough room. I'm sorry, it's not, I'm not a professional here and I don't have a film crew, so I gotta do this all by myself. The last type of cartilage we're gonna look at is called fibrocartilage. Fibrocartilage is very fibrous, but it's filled with collagen fibers. Makes it very strong. And we don't really see the collagen fibers in the tissue very well. So when we look at this tissue, what we will see under a microscope is we'll see very often what looks like a strip of hyaline cartilage in the middle of here. And very often there is some hyaline cartilage off to the side of fibrocartilage. So you'll see sort of this smooth purple background and you'll see some empty spaces in here. I know this probably isn't showing up very well on your, on the camera, but I'm gonna try to show you the best I can. And so I'll see all these lacunae with chondrocytes in it, right? But the trick to this is fibrocartilage is often described as peas in a pod because when you open a long um, pea pod, every space has in it an individual pea. Or to me, they look like worms with a dot on them. What we will see off to the side are these little rows of cells growing in these empty chambers almost in straight lines. And sometimes, there might be two rows in some areas, but there's these cells growing in these empty spaces that end up doing this. And sometimes they look like little bubbles strung together with a cell inside, and you'll see it on both sides of this strip of cartilage here. When you see these long rows of cells growing like this, like little worms, and in between them will be some other fibers running through here, which we're not gonna see very well, but there would be collagen fibers in there, then that's what makes this fibrocartilage. Usually on this slide, I'm not gonna see the perichondrium, it's too far out of the screen, but if I ask you to ID the cells, the little dots inside of here, the cells are still called chondrocytes. If I ask you to identify the spaces surrounding the cells, that is still called a lacuna. So I have three of the four same questions I could ask you. The only thing I can't ask is for the perichondrium on here because you're not going to see it on fibrocartilage. So ID the tissue, ID the tissue, ID the tissue. Hyaline cartilage, elastic cartilage, fibrocartilage. ID the cell, ID the cell, ID the cell, always a chondrocyte. There are chondroblasts, but we're not gonna recognize the difference at this point. ID the space surrounding the cell, ID the space around the cell, or ID the space that the cell lives in, lacuna. ID the membrane, ID the membrane, perichondrium. So, I hope you found that helpful in at least trying to understand the tissues. What I'm gonna do finally now is I'm gonna turn on my projector. I'm gonna turn off the lights and I'm gonna pull the screen down 
so that you guys can actually see the slides. Pardon my jump, but I have to get the screen down here. So, take a look at this slide very carefully. This is perichondrium, this pink membrane out here, and there's a little bit over here. It looks like a bunch of dense connective tissue. This smooth purple background is the matrix of hyaline cartilage. Every one of these little spaces is a lacuna, and in some of them I see chondrocytes living in the lacuna. So there's four questions. ID the tissue, hyaline cartilage. Obviously the name will not be on the picture. Can't give you the answer on the test. ID the space, lacuna. ID the cell, chondrocyte. ID the membrane on the outer edge, perichondrium. Now stare at this for a second, give it a good look and look at how smooth that is. Because when I switch to the next slide, you can look in the spaces or these areas between the cells and see how fuzzy it looks and all these fibers in here. That's your clue that you're looking at elastic cartilage. It's got a very fuzzy matrix filled with elastic fibers. This is perichondrium and perichondrium. So the membrane, ID the membrane, perichondrium. ID the cell, chondrocyte. ID the space surrounding the cell, lacuna. Same questions but the matrix is fuzzy, must be elastic cartilage. If I go back one, now you see the smoothness of hyaline cartilage and you understand what I'm talking about. The last of the three cartilage slides we can look at is gonna be fibrocartilage. Now this is sort of a lower magnification, but there's a band of what looks like hyaline cartilage here, and then I see these little worm-like structures or these little rows of cells that looks like they're, to me, it looks like these little worms are eating into the middle here. And so that's where your fibrocartilage is out here on the edge. Those are chondrocytes and lacuna. I would probably most likely ask you the higher magnification where I can see some hyaline over here, but here are my little rows of cells and this would be all your fibrocartilage in between. Okay. So if I ask you to ID this tissue and you see the little um, rows of chondrocytes, that's fibrocartilage. Every cell is a chondrocyte and the little space surrounding the cell would be a lacuna. So I hope you learned something about the cartilages. I want you to understand what they look like so that when we get to the cartilages in lecture and we talk about their functions, you can picture in your mind's eye the tissue and you can see why the smooth one is slick and soft. You can see why the fuzzy one is flexible. And you can see why this one's gonna be very, very tough. And that's, why, that's how we'll know where we find specific cartilages in the body. The anatomy, the, the form, fits the function, the physiology. So get pictures of all these slides in your head, and then we'll talk about the whys in lecture for lecture test two. I hope you had some fun. I hope you learned something. I hope you had as much fun as I did. And I'll see you on the next video, okay? There's one more video for this first lab test, which is the video on the integumentary system or our skin. We're gonna look at a skin model and a skin slide, and we'll understand what skin is like so that when we talk about it for lecture, we'll know the, the, um, we'll know the form for the functions that we're talking about, okay? Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.